the mystery is finally out. Two weeks of manhunt. Countless news headlines. It's a race against time to save them. The submarine imploded in the depths of the Atlantic Ocean with all five people on board. And hours of expert opinion later, the imploded Titan submarine was seen for the first time. Its debris was recovered from the ocean floor. An ROV, a remote operated vehicle, from the vessel Horizon Arctic discovered the tail cone of the Titan submersible approximately 1,600 feet from the bow of the Titanic on the seafloor. The ROV subsequently found additional debris. In consultation with experts from within the Unified Command, the debris is consistent with the catastrophic loss of the pressure chamber. Upon this determination, we immediately notified the families. If you were one of those people who was constantly hitting refresh on any news of the Titan, you are not alone. The Titan submersible tragedy became an obsession, an international tragedy, a mystery that both horrified and mesmerized people. It dominated front pages, it triggered an international response, and may have cost countries millions of dollars. But what was this expedition about? More importantly, why did five people board a submersible craft to travel to the deepest depths of the ocean? The year was 1912. The Titanic was setting sail. It was gearing up for its maiden voyage. The rest, as we know, is history. The unsinkable ship actually sank. It hit an iceberg and went down in the Atlantic. Over 1,500 people died. So the Titanic may have sunk, but its popularity never did. The tale of the Titanic is a multi-billion dollar industry. There were books, documentaries, video games, and museums. All to immortalize the tragic voyage. The most famous of them is the movie Titanic directed by James Cameron in 1997. It earned more than $2.2 billion and gave birth to a group of Titanic enthusiasts, those who would do anything to see the wreck. And by the way, it's not lost on me as, as somebody who studied the, the meaning of Titanic. It's, it's greater meaning to us, you know, historically and societally, that it's about warnings that were ignored. That ship's lying at the bottom of the ocean, not because of the nature of its steel or the nature of its compartments, but just because of bad seamanship. The captain was warned, there were icebergs ahead, it was a moonless night, and he plowed ahead for whatever reason. I think there was some greed, there was some glory in it. He had a he had to boot up his rear from J. Bruce Ismay to get into New York on time or or early so they'd have a headline, which I show in the in the film. You know, and here we are again, and at the same place. You know, now there's one wreck lying next to the other wreck for the same damn reason. So called Titaniacs would do anything to see the Titanic, to witness its wreck in all its glory. People have gone there before, they've taken submersibles to see the broken ship. But this story is truly unique. That's because there's a surreal similarity to the Titanic disaster itself. The Titanic captain was warned of the iceberg. He still steamed ahead at full speed. Many people died as a result. This too was a similar tragedy. It happened at the same exact site and it too ignored a lot of warnings. The Titanic's wreck is located at the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean some 13,000 feet underwater. It's located around 740 kilometers from Canada's Newfoundland, which brings us to the Titan Submersible. It belongs to a company called OceanGate. The company conducts dives to go see the Titanic wreck. Tickets cost a whopping $250,000. This is for an eight-day trip, and if you want to dive to the wreck. Not many have money like that but these people on board the Titan Submersible did. 
So on the morning of June 18th, they set sail. On board were five people. Titanic expert Paul Henry Nagiole, British Pakistani billionaire Shahzada Dawood, his son Suleiman, and billionaire British explorer Hamish Harding. Joining them was the Ocean Gate CEO himself, Stockton Rush. He was piloting the vessel for this fatal dive. So all five of them entered the cramped vessel. Divers closed them inside by tightening a ring of bolts. The craft rolled on the waves, bobbing some 13,000 feet above the Titanic's 111-year-old wreckage. Soon, it was weighed down by sandbags and pipes. The Titan slid off an underwater platform. It began its two-and-a-half-hour descent to the storied wreck. The descent triggered the 96-hour countdown. This is the window of air supply the vessel has. 96 hours later, the oxygen would run out. It was supposed to be a ride of a lifetime. But one hour and 45 minutes later, all communications with the vessel are lost. This moment it transpires was very important. The joyride turned into one of the most closely watched ocean disasters of all time. Soon, Titan support ship Polar Prince notified the US Coast Guard. It said that the sub was missing. This set off a desperate search and rescue mission. An armada of ships from four countries started searching the vast ocean. Search, 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 four days of search. They're searching everywhere. They were, run they were running around with their hair on fire. The sub was right where it was. It was literally on the seafloor below its last known position, which is the first place you look in a search is the last known position. You don't go running around all over the landscape with planes and trains and automobiles searching, right? It was right where it was when it imploded. And I knew that's where they were going to find it. It is a, a remote area. Uh, and it is uh, a challenge to conduct a uh, search in that remote area. The vessel uh, was designed with a 96-hour uh, sustainment uh, capability if there was an emergency on board. And so uh, we're using that time, making the best use of every moment of that time. As explorers, we are pessimistic and objective. And as it stands right now, it would be a miracle if they are recovered alive. We have to hold out hope. The good news is, what I can tell you is, we're searching in the area where the noises were detected. The discovery of banging noises coming from presumably the uh, lost sub, we don't know that in fact uh, they are coming from that, but let's assume for a moment that they are, then that is a positive sign, but that still is no guarantee. For days, the world watched anxiously. There was hope, but there was also a 96-hour countdown. On Thursday came the news everyone had feared. The Titan's debris had been found. It was located 1,600 feet from the Titanic bow. Scattered remnants were consistent with a catastrophic implosion. Well, uh... Look, uh, you give uh, uh, an air balloon to a five-year-old and you tell it to poke it. Um, it goes in a fraction of a second. Uh, the same thing happens in reverse in the ocean. Uh, you poke it and in a fraction of a second, it's gone. So the implosion, it's a negative explosion, but it's the same. It's the same pattern. It exploded inwards in a matter of a thousandth of a second. It's probably a mercy because that was probably a, uh, a kinder end than the unbelievably difficult situation of being four days in a cold, dark, uh, confined space. So this would have happened very quickly. I don't think anybody even had the time to realize what happened. This brings us to the vessel itself. The Titan is 22 feet long, 9 feet wide, and 8 feet high. It has space for four passengers plus the pilot. Expeditions cost up to $250,000 per person. The craft has about 96 hours of air. 
there is a large domed porthole for observation, as well as external lights and 4K cameras. The interior walls are heated. That is because the bottom of the ocean is freezing. There's even a toilet area. Now, there has been a lot of confusion. Is it a submarine or is it a submersible? Technically, the Titan is a submersible. That's because it does not have the ability to launch itself. It needs support ships to work. GPS cannot be accessed underwater, so the Titan is guided via text messages from the surface ship. This isn't the first time Titan has gone to the wreck site. Between 2021 and 2022, it reached the Titanic site a dozen times, but there have been a lot of talks about safety. Previous passengers have complained about it. When we went down, it was just, there were communication problems on every trip I've taken of the four separate dives I've taken with Ocean Gate. Every time there was a problem with at least, you know, sporadically communicating with the surface. And again, I don't think that's their fault as much as just that's the nature of the beast. You know, when you're going a, a thousand feet or 13,000 feet underwater, you're going to lose contact for a while. OceanGate was warned of the potential for catastrophic problems. Experts inside and outside the company warned of potential dangers. It urged the company to undergo a certification process, but the dives continued. In the very, very deep submersibles like the Titan, 4,000 meters deep, there are only 10 vehicles in the whole world that can go 4,000 meters or deeper and all of them are certified except the Titan. So it is an outlier. Experts in the industry at the conference voiced concern, what are we going to do? This is very risky. Uh, we understand the, the strategy, but it is very risky for everybody. This brings us to the catastrophic implosion. There is crushing water pressure at the floor of the ocean. At sea level, atmospheric pressure is 14.7 pounds per square inch, or PSI. At the Titanic wreck site, it's around 6,000 PSI. So at that depth, the Titan would have collapsed on itself in milliseconds, crushed by the enormous water pressure. Death would have been almost instant. In focus is the Titan's experimental carbon fiber hull. There were many warnings about it. Many believe this implosion was likely due to a failure of the pressure hull. But the investigation is on. Even then, it will be difficult to pinpoint one cause. Yes, uh, on the technical side, one of the technologies that was unique to the Seagate, uh, uh, OceanGate uh, uh, submersible, was that uh, they used carbon fiber. Nobody had ever made a, a carbon fiber pressure hull for that depth before. It is very difficult to test uh, and verify. And that was a bit uh, one of the key items that, that needed a lot of work in verifying that under what conditions and what's the reliability of, of these non-metallic. Metallic hulls have elasticity to them. We know how they behave. They are in engineering terms, a linear material, you can predict them. Uh, carbon fiber are very, very strong in tension. They're not so strong in compression. And we know that this it is, but it's how do they react under extreme pressure? Um, that leads a lot of research. So what's next? Scientists say stop all expeditions to the Titanic. OceanGate has now complied. It'll end all exploration and commercial operations. Does this mean dives to the Titanic wreck will end? The Titan story continues to fascinate the world. Ironically, just like the story of the Titanic did. The Titanic itself is not the greatest shipwreck in recent times. There have been worse disasters. But when we think shipwreck, we immediately think Titanic. The tale looms large over us, just like the story of the Titan. If five men went missing on just a trek, it wouldn't generate such a response. But the story of the Titan did. At the same time, there was a huge boat sinking in the Mediterranean. 
750 people were on board. Only 100 survived. But even then, it did not get the attention the Titan story did. I mean, you think about what's happening this week. There is, there is a, a potential tragedy unfolding with a submarine that is getting minute-to-minute -minute coverage all around the world. And it's understandable because obviously we all want and pray that those folks are rescued. But the fact that that's gotten so much more attention than 700 people who <laughs> sank is... Our obsession with tragedies and the way it played out on social media. The Titan was like any other disaster, but it turned into a spectacle. Five rich men on a vehicle often called a death trap. A huge search and rescue mission, a countdown to the last few hours of oxygen, and at the end, a catastrophic implosion. If you found yourself captivated by this story, you were not alone. Because oftentimes, one death is a tragedy, a hundred just a statistic. All lives are precious, but some a little more than others.